Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're having a good day. Um, one of the most requested videos we've gotten a lot recently is basically how have I been losing weight slash how does one do meal prep or cooking for themselves for the week and prepping their meals in advance so you don't have to worry about what you're eating that day things like that. So I thought I'd finally go ahead and make that video for y'all. I've been kind of avoiding it. <laughs> um, a, because it's kind of a lot to do meal prep and so it's hard to do that and film it. But also I'm not really like a personal trainer or anything so I don't want y'all to take this as gospel or like this is the only way you can lose weight. There's a ton of healthy ways to lose weight and there's a ton of information on YouTube, on bodybuilding.com, on Reddit. I mean all over the internet there's thousands and millions of fitness sites on how to lose weight or how to meal prep. So I'm just going to give y'all like the basics of how I do it. Um, I try to do it as quickly as possible. I'm an engineer. I try to be efficient, get it all done. And I've got it down to kind of a good science. I can get it all done in less than an hour. Um, I cook twice a week. So I'll cook for three days and then I'll cook for four days. And I prep it all and then I put it into Tupperware and that way I can just carry it to work and I have it when I get home. And then the only thing I have to cook fresh every day is my breakfast, which is just eggs. So I just get up and cook eggs in the morning and that doesn't take any time. So first thing is first, the things you're going to need. Um, you're going to need an oven, preferably a skillet, depending on what we're making. I don't need a skillet, but a lot of y'all will if you're cooking specific foods. And then I have a George Foreman. Um, if you have a grill, that's even better, but we don't have a grill in our apartment. So I have a George Foreman to cook my steak. And then I actually cook chicken and I cook fish in the oven. And I cook them in these big baking dishes. You got a pia. So those are your typical 11 by 13 baking dishes, minor glass. Um, and that's what I cook my chicken and my fish in. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the food out and I'll kind of get started and show you how we do it. Alrighty guys, here is what I have for meal prep. So I'm actually not going to use all of this, but I wanted to give you all examples of things you can use so you can switch it up. So eating the same thing every day can get really boring really quickly. So one of the things that's crucial is to develop a good flavor cabinet, spice cabinet. So you can go find these wherever you get your spices from at the grocery store. They have a ton of different flavors of them. So like we got roasted garlic, we got a Montreal steak flavor, which I'll put on the steaks. Um, they even have fun flavors like Belgian white ale, which kind of supposed to taste like Blue Moon, and brown sugar bourbon, my favorite. Um, I don't have it right now, but it's like a maple flavor. And so those are all zero calories, and they make the food taste a lot better. Since you're eating plain proteins, you're going to really want to spice those up with something. A lot of people like to put cayenne or um, red pepper flakes. I'm kind of a wimp when it comes to spicy foods, so I don't really do any of that stuff. Um, another great one, especially for chicken is Frank's Red um, Buffalo Sauce. So surprise, surprise, that stuff is actually zero calories. So you can dump a ton of that on it, either before or after cooking. I do it before and cook it and let it marinate in that sauce. And then a lot of people will do that afterwards and just kind of coat it like you would wings. And then you've got things like Texas Pete and some other sauces and uh, flavorings down here. So what I do is I layer the tilapia um, flat in the baking dish one layer and then I'll coat that in salt and pepper and lemon. I actually really hate fish. I do not like fish at all. My coach is making me eat it. So I have to put a crap ton of lemon on it to make it palatable for me. If you like fish, more power to you. Um, another alternative for tilapia is cod. Any kind of white fish is good. Um, Especially if you're one of those people who's fit, but like you're trying to lose that last five or ten pounds, fish is a great option. Um, I've had arguments with my coach as to why that is, but he just said he insists that it works, and I will say that it does work for that last five or ten pounds switching over to fish um, from something like steak or chicken. I was eating chicken for the past few months, and I switched to fish, and I was actually eating chicken and fish, but for these past few days I've switched back to steak instead of chicken and that's just because of what I'm doing right now for my prep I'm actually doing a photo shoot this weekend and so I'm kind of loading those calories back in so that I can look full for the photo shoot so that means steak and that means peanut butter and that means olive oil for me so I'll cook the fish in olive oil salt pepper and lemon and then the steak, I'll just coat it in a good layer of salt and pepper and then put some of that Montreal steak seasoning and then just grill that on the George Foreman. 
So I'm also cooking some veggies. I have the time and patience to get fresh veggies. That's great. I don't, so I like to get frozen veggies. Um, broccoli is great. Any of those steamable bags, if you can find these at the grocery store, are great. Um, tonight I'm doing green beans. Uh, those are much tastier to me than broccoli. Not a huge fan of broccoli, but I'll eat it. And another great seasoning actually for broccoli is kernel seasoning. So I had never heard of this until my coach told me about them. If you go to the popcorn aisle in your grocery store, they have these things that are called kernel seasonings and they're used to flavor popcorn and they're zero calorie and they're a great way to flavor vegetables and egg whites. They have a bacon cheddar flavor that I put on egg whites that makes them palatable. I don't like plain egg whites. Again, you'll notice there's a trend here. I don't like a lot of the foods I'm eating. So you have to get creative with ways to make them tasty for you. And I think that's a problem a lot of people have is like they want to eat healthy, but they just can't handle A, eating the same thing every day and B, eating things that they don't particularly like. So if you get creative with it and put a lot of seasonings on it and kind of mess with it and do some trial and error, you can eventually find a combination that you like. So to cook this fish, I'm gonna set the oven to 375, and then the George Foreman is already warming up, and I'm gonna prep the fish so you can see what it looks like. guys so here's my fish um, I leave the lemons on there I don't know if that affects the taste very much I don't know if it gives it more of a lemon flavor but I don't like to take any chances so I like to put on as much lemon as possible and I kind of leave that on there just in case it does help a little bit so if you'll see the oven is still on preheating so we're waiting on that so one thing you can do that will make this go a lot quicker especially if you get frozen vegetables is you can multitask so these you just pop in the microwave for seven minutes so I'll cook these while I'm cooking my other things. So that way they have time to cool off because these bags get super hot. So I'll let them microwave while I'm cooking everything else and then I'll let them cool off for a bit. And when you package all your Tupperware, you're gonna want it to be room temperature. You gotta wait for all of this stuff to chill out and get back down to room temperature because if you try to Tupperware, if you try to put everything into the Tupperware while it's still hot, you end up steaming everything and it makes everything soggy and gross and disgusting. So just once you're done, leave it on a cooling rack, leave it out, let it get down to room temperature, and then weigh it out and put it into your Tupperware. And that way you will, everything will taste fresh and still maintain that moisture without steaming it and being all disgusting. So if it's a little bit louder, I'm sorry, I got the microwave going. Next up is the steak. So I'm just gonna put some salt and pepper on that. And then that Montreal steak seasoning, like I said before. So let's go ahead and get that started. super loud now I got the steak in there and I've got my microwave going so that's where the noise is coming from so with the George Foreman steak cooks really quickly even a really big piece of steak like the one I just put in there I mean if you look at it this is over a pound of beef it's like a big steak it'll still cook in about four minutes so you really got to keep an eye on it unless you like your steaks like really well done I personally like my medium rare unfortunately when you reheat it it kind of loses the medium rare texture and coloring a little bit because it gets reheated and cooked a little bit more so if you like your steaks really rare kind of be sure to keep a close eye on it if you're grilling it kind of just grill it how you would normally grill a steak um, to your liking I just try to cook everything as most efficiently as I can so if you look we got two things going right now soon we'll have three going once this oven is preheated so really you can cook all of it at the same time so it really does not have to take that much time guys oh there we go the fish is ready so let's put the fish in and i've got three pounds of tilapia and i set that for um 18 minutes again that's something you're gonna have to play by ear depending on how um, you like your fish cooked. I mean, I only know the one way to, to cook it and that's how Nate told me. Nate had to teach me how to cook fish since I had never eaten it before this. Um, 
But yeah, so I just cook it until it's properly cooked. You know, they, if, it should fall apart with a fork. When you, when you um, poke it, it should just crumble apart. That's how you know it's done. Um, so right now we have all three things that we're cooking tonight going. So if I was cooking chicken, what I do with chicken is I buy um, boneless, skinless chicken breast from the grocery store. I can get it for $2 a pound at Harris Teeter if you go ask the butcher for it. Um, that's the cheapest way I know to get chicken breast. There's other places that are decently priced, but that's the cheapest that I've found in town. So if you can, go to the butcher section of your grocery store and see if they sell chicken breast cheaper back there versus getting it packaged and sealed because that's usually more expensive. Um, so if I do cook my chicken, what I'll do is I'll sit there and I'll cube it to about one inch cubes and I will put it in the same baking dish that you saw me put the fish in and then I'll season it all, I'll put the red, Frank's Red Hot, put some salt and pepper or put one of these seasonings on it if I have one of those that time. Um, and then I'll cook that on 425 uh, Fahrenheit. Yeah, these are all going to be American measurements, sorry guys. So it's 425 degrees Fahrenheit for 23, 24 minutes depending on how tightly packed I pack the baking dish. You should be able to fit about five pounds of chopped up chicken breast into one of those baking dishes. So you can cook a lot of chicken at once in just 25 minutes. Um, that should be more than enough for most of you. I'm on the larger side, so I tend to eat more. Even though I'm cutting, I'm still eating six, seven times a day. Uh, so I usually have to prep a lot of food. Um, examples for if you're not necessarily trying to cut, if you're bulking like Nate is, Nate cooks ground beef. He gets the 90% um, leaven ground beef and he'll cook that in the skillet uh, just until it's all the way cooked. And he'll actually use taco seasoning. Let's see if we have any. No, he doesn't have any right now. But there are these little packets of taco seasoning you can get in the international aisle of your grocery store. And that's how he flavors his ground beef. And then he actually gets the uh, small red potatoes that you can steam in a bag. And uh, you can find those in your produce section. And so he'll steam a few bags of those, mash them up till they're kind of loosely mashed, like they're in between mashed potatoes and just chopped up potatoes. And he'll coat those with some salt and pepper and some butter. And uh, his food is a lot tastier than mine. I like to stare and smell at his food all the time because it's infinitely more tasty. So those are some examples of some proteins you can eat. Um, lean ground beef, any kind of lean cut of steak. I'm using top sirloin for my steak. Um, Chicken is great, fish is great. Those are the main ones that I know of that people commonly use. If you're vegetarian, sorry, I don't really know much about how to get your protein in other than like nuts or peanut butter. I'm sure there's plenty of vegetarian options out there for you. Um, again, sorry for this noise. So our first bag of green beans is done. And I can go ahead and put another bag. And so this steak is probably done too, so I'm gonna get this out. So one thing you might notice if you're looking really closely is I'm not actually salting my steak. Um, I'm not supposed to be salting any of my protein right now. Um, that's just because I'm doing a photo shoot. Normally I would put a fair amount of salt on it. So definitely salt your food, don't skip that. It brings out a lot more flavor and it's gonna make it much tastier for you. Um, so while this is all cooking, really there's not much else to it other than waiting for it all to finish. So another thing you're gonna need if you're gonna be meal prepping for multiple days at a time is lots of Tupperware of various sizes. So these are what we use most of the time. They're just your typical one meal Tupperware. It can fit any of the meals that we make. So he'll be able to put his ground beef and potatoes in it, or I can put my um, chicken and veggies in it, or my fish and veggies. Um, other carb options, since he's allowed to eat carbs, uh, sweet potatoes are fantastic. I think some people call them yams, but in North Carolina they're sweet potatoes. Uh, those are a fantastic carb source. He uses those red potatoes, like I said. Um, rice, I used to eat a ton of rice back at the beginning of this cut. He cut my coach cut them out, but um, just 
white rice, just plain white rice. If you have a rice cooker, that's fantastic. Nate actually had a rice cooker and that has saved me so much time over the past few months being able to cook everything in a rice cooker because you can cook a lot at once and it's a lot quicker than um, cooking it on the stove in a big pot. The last really key to meal prep that you're gonna need is a food skip. So this is like a food scale. I got it real cheap off Amazon. I think it was like $10. Like they're not expensive guys. And um, what you do is you measure your food in it. So what you do is you just tear it or zero it out with an empty Tupperware on it. And then you will fill up the amount of protein and food you need. So I guess the next question is how do you know how much food you need? or how much do you know how much to weigh into each meal. So I do not weigh my veggies. Those are pretty much zero calories. So don't worry about doing your broccoli or green beans. The only thing you really need to weigh are your carb sources, like your potatoes, your rice, your sweet potatoes, things like that, or your um, proteins. So to figure out how much you need, you really need to figure out how many calories you need per day, and then set up a diet around that and your macro split. So macro splitting, is kind of a complicated topic. It could be its own video. Uh, I would Google that. I'll put the phrase down below here for you. Macronutrients and macronutrient splitting is what you should Google. That will tell you kind of what the split should be. So like for example, it's your separation of protein, carbs, and fat. A lot of people will do 40, 40, 20. So they'll do 40% protein, 40% carbs, 20% fats. And that just means where are your calories coming from. 40% of your calories should be coming from protein sources, 40% of your calories should be coming from carb sources, and then 20% should be coming from fat. That's an example. If you have trouble putting on weight, you know, they'll up the, up the fats, maybe lower the carbs a little bit, just because fats are more calorie dense and it allows you to get more calories in while eating less of a volume of food. So you really need to Google that. You need to figure out your daily calorie needs. Um, a great way to do that is to do a food journal. Um, journal everything you eat and then how many calories are in it, how many grams of protein are in it, how many grams of carbs are in it, and how many grams of fat are in it. Track all of that. There's plenty of apps for that. MyFitnessPal is probably the most common and the easiest one to use. And if you journal all the food you eat for a week and then measure your weight at the beginning and end of that week, and see if you gained weight, you maintained weight, and you lost weight. If you've maintained weight, then that's showing you roughly what your daily caloric intake is. And then if you're trying to lose weight, you just drop that by 500. And if you're trying to gain weight, you just add 500 to that. Um, but again, you're gonna wanna do a lot of research on that. If y'all would like, let me know in the comments if you'd like a video that gets into that in more detail. I just didn't wanna go into a ton of that detail in case you already know that or if you'd rather just read about it on your own. Alrighty guys, it looks like our fish is done. It's all pretty in there, so I'm gonna take it out. Let me put this camera down so I don't burn myself. So as you can see guys, this is what it looks like cooked. Um, you gotta let it rest for a bit. So I actually put it on a cookie sheet, and that way it's not touching the stove directly and uh, it allows it to cool off a little bit quicker. So let's look and see if it's done. So see how it just kind of falls apart? Like when I poke it, it's real easy to just rip it apart like that. That's how I know it's done. Um, I'm assuming if you're gonna be cooking fish, you know how to cook it a lot better than I do, so go with what you know. I'm just doing what I know, and that's not very much. One thing I do with the chicken that I don't do with the fish, and maybe I should start doing it with the fish, is when it comes out, you'll notice there's a lot of juice in here. Um, if there's chicken, what I'll often do is I'll pour out the juice while leaving the chicken in there and let it cool off without the juice in there. And that's just because it cools off quicker. Um, I'm afraid to mess with the fish, so I'll just kind of let it sit in its juices for a bit. Um, the chicken, it doesn't dry it out if you take it out of the juices. Um, that should be fine. But with steak, for sure, do not cut the steak until it is room temperature. All those juices are seared in there and you want to leave them in there to stay when it cools off instead of cutting it. Because if you cut it while it's still hot, all those juices will pour out and you'll have dry gross steak. And that's not good. And that goes for any steak. That's not just for meal prep. Always let your steak rest when you're done cooking it. And it's still cooking a little bit. Even once you take it off the heat, you'd be surprised how long it's still cooking. Alrighty, so steak is all done. Fish is all done. 
veggies are all done. So now I just gotta wait for it to cool off and I'll check back in with y'all and I will show you how I partition it up into my Tupperware. And then we'll be done. See, that was real quick. I mean, I've you know, looking at the clock, I've been at this for about 30 minutes and that's a little bit longer just because I've been filming. So, not hard to do. There is no excuse of I do not have time to meal prep. I'm willing to bet in the time you spent going to all those restaurants and all those fast food drive throughs to get all your meals in, you could have more quickly done this once and had food for three days and been good and not had to worry about it. Look who's home. Oh my God, catch me the pose. Oh, hello. <laughs> Hi. So while I was waiting for the food to cool off, I did a little bit of cleaning and they got home. And we're finishing up Passengers. We started that yes. the other night. Twisted AF. Yes. Knox, what you thinking? She's going to join us, she says. Yep, she's joining us. All right, guys. So next up is weighing everything out and putting it on here. I won't make y'all sit through all of it, but I'll give y'all the, the lowdown. So all you got to do is you pick a Tupperware, like so, turn it on, and then it automatically calibrates itself to the weight of your Tupperware. So it's already at zero. So then you just got to add like the right amount of whatever meat you're putting in there. So we got our fish. And I need three ounces of fish in each meal. So I usually just, I don't cut this up into bite-sized pieces, but with the steak and the chicken I will. Because it's a lot easier to microwave and stuff and you don't have to worry about bringing a knife with you wherever you are. But if you got knives at work, then by all means, you don't need to cut it up. Okay, so that's about three ounces. I don't usually get exact, as long as it's within like 0.1 pounds, I'm usually fine with it. Nate's pro tip. If you can afford it, put cheese in your tilapia with your lemon. Use Parmesan. It's the best fish you've ever had. But I'm not allowed to have cheese. Carson's not allowed to have cheese though. Which is why he looks so great. I do not look great right now. Thank you. Okay. So I don't weigh the vegetables, but what I'll do is I kind of just divide each of these bags into four or five, depending on the size of the bag. Um, so this one I'll divide into fifths. So then you just put a little handful in there. And then you just close it up and that's it. And so I'll just do that for all of my fish and I'll cut up my steak and do that for the steak. And that's all there is to it guys. Like meal prep is not that hard. It just seems intimidating because you're cooking for a few days. But if you do it simple and you're eating pretty much the same meals over and over, then it's really easy. So that's pretty much it. So thanks for watching guys. Hope y'all found this interesting. Again, uh, let us know if you want more fitness type videos. So we can do more stuff like this and we can do some gym stuff too if y'all are interested in that. Um, let us know down in the comments if you liked it, if you didn't, give us some feedback. And other than that, I hope you have a great day and thanks for watching.